yesterday we had the last one of our talks on these issues that face the church and face society today. And you might remember that at the very beginning of this series I began by reflecting on some verses in Psalm 19. There were three verses left at the very end of that psalm that we didn't look at back then that I want to conclude with today. They're verses 12 to 14 of Psalm 19. Who can discern his errors? Declare me innocent from hidden faults. Keep back your servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgressions. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. So we've looked at these big, big issues together. And we've seen how these issues impact the life of society and impact the life of the church. We've seen too that all of us fall short of God's perfect standards, that all of us have sinned and all of us have failed God and none of us are without fault. God says here in verse 12 of Psalm 19 that we cannot understand our mistakes or our errors that some are no more or no less sinful than others, that all of us have sinned and fall short of God's perfect glory and standards. Who can discern his errors? Declare me innocent from hidden faults, the psalmist writes. So let's, as we conclude this little series, do so with humility and with penitence, acknowledging our failings and acknowledging our faults. The psalmist continues in verse 13 and some will indeed ask what is the psalmist referring to when he speaks of great transgression. Keep back your servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of the great transgression. The great transgression is leaving Christ out of our lives, setting God's word and God's ways to one side, not recognising that Christ died for us, that Christ died for me, that he paid the price for my sin and for your sin, that he paid the price that you and I uh, deserved to be ours. He paid the price for our disobedience to God's word and to God's law. All of us have broken God's laws. All of us have failed to keep God's commandments. And so all of us need his cleansing. But all of us too can be cleansed. All of us can be forgiven. The psalmist writes, Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. As this series comes to an end, make very certain that he is your rock, that he is your redeemer, that you and I are building our lives on his word, that we're living under the authority of God's word, and that in our lives, Jesus Christ is Lord. The words of a prayer that I was taught a long, long time ago when I first became a Christian, it's part of a, a covenant prayer of an organization called Christian Endeavor. Let me just conclude this series with these words. Trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ for strength, I promise him that I will strive to do whatever he would like to have me do, that I will pray and read the Bible every day, and that just as far as I know how, I will try to lead a Christian life. Go before us, O Lord, in all our doings, with your most gracious favour, 
and further us with your continual help, that in all our works, begun, continued, and ended in you, we may glorify your holy name, and finally, by your mercy, receive everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.